Well, you don't get much more emotional than a main event like that. As a tribute to Jay Briscoe, Mark and Jay Lethal went out there and did everything they could to honor the legacy of Jay Briscoe, and hopefully Mark Briscoe can be featured on television for AEW going forward. What an emotional main event. I'm John Rettham with my review of AEW Dynamite from Rupp Arena in Lexington, Kentucky. Now, there were issues with this show as far as the matches leading up to that, but you know what? It almost feels subdued because this is all about honoring Jay Briscoe. And really, if you did not at least get close to shedding a tear or several, especially if you were invested in the Briscoe's career, then I really don't know what to tell you because that got me. There were a few moments that got me. So, yeah, Rupp Arena. Big old arena, about 6,000 people apparently. I think they had a curtain down the middle so, because I think Rupp Arena is between twenty and 23,000 people. I'm actually a little bit surprised they didn't draw more people, but nevertheless, uh, I will say that even though it was not even quite half capacity, if you put a curtain down the middle, the crowd mostly made noise, but one thing about AEW that I wish they would do, <clears throat> figure out a way to mic the crowd better, because sometimes it comes along great, and sometimes it doesn't. That being said, they start off saying, okay, this is what the card's going to be, <clears throat> And then we start with Ricky Starks and Action Andretti against Chris Jericho and Sammy Guevara. I'm not a fan of any of the Jericho Appreciation Society stuff. I'm kind of done with Chris Jericho being in the ring in general. He's getting out of shape again. I know he's in his 50s, but this stuff with Sammy is played out a couple of years ago. This has done nothing for Ricky. They like Action. He's fine. He is going to take a bit more time to get more TV ready, but the guy certainly is fired up, and they do like him, and he's got some ability. Ricky Starks already feels cooled off, and I mean, this is after being in Seattle to watch him beat Chris Jericho and then get put through the table. That was pretty ridiculous, but Ricky was really over there. That was just a few weeks ago. Anyway, Garcia used the bat, making Aubrey look ridiculous, and I love Aubrey. What a great referee. Her and Red Shoes, my two favorite referees going today, <clears throat> as far as on a big stage, but they make they make the referees look stupid, and Garcia, he's completely cooled off, even when he eventually turns, I don't really think it's going to matter, at least in this current environment, GTH on action, and ready, one, two, three, and then we get a card run out, we didn't get an aftermath here, Mark Briscoe versus Jay Lethal in the main event, and it had to be in the main event, video package on the Briscoes, it was the stuff about the kids, because no kids should have to I mean, no parent should have to bury their child. No child should have to grow up without a parent. And that's just terrible. And I hope the parent... Or, I hope everybody involved on the Briscoe side recovers. Just emotionally, physically. I know the daughters had multiple surgeries. Tony Khan has gone on record as saying he will be taking care of the family. Which... He's done the same for Bro Brody Lee, so yeah, that was certainly some. I really do hope that the daughters will pull through. Apparently, they're getting better, but it's just going to take quite a while. But it is a nice gesture from Tony Khan. I do the thank you, Jay Chance. Those, those are nice. Um, I do want to quickly say, to get a little bit angry, whoever the Warner Brothers Discovery executive was, <laughs> they wouldn't even let them do a tribute show to Jay last week. They're an asshole. They're, they're, they're a goddamn asshole. Man, woman, animal, vegetable, mineral, I don't care. Yes, Tony Khan had to push for it and push for it and push for it. And as much grief as people give, give Tony Khan, as much crap as people give Tony Khan, and rightfully so for how he comes across sometimes, he, he does want to give back to the fans. Sometimes a little bit too much. But he pushed for it, and maybe it's actually a good thing that he... It's terrible that they couldn't really honor Jay Briscoe last week, but maybe it's a good thing that they were able to wait a week, and Mark was able to wrestle, because I can't imagine that Mark Briscoe would have been able to wrestle a day after his brother um, <clears throat> was tragically killed. But that being said, fuck the Warner Bros. Discovery executive that uh, kept putting the kibosh on that, when you have Dana White's Power Slap League, a guy that had slapped his wife and a whole bunch of other stuff and everything, <clears throat> a whole bunch of other programming. And that, it, again... Just to get, not even get on a soapbox. Jay addressed what he tweeted a number of years ago. I held on to it for a while. 
being as somebody that doesn't appreciate that kind of language as somebody that used to have that kind of anger towards various people. Jay didn't have that anymore. Many, 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 many people spoke and said that Jay had changed, he'd done all the stuff he'd done, and it was something that he realized he shouldn't have said, and that he turned around, changed his, changed his life for the positive, <clears throat> and all that, and that was held onto by a Warner Bros. Discovery executive, yet so many other people that have done things more recently and a lot more egregious were allowed to be on television. That's, that's fucking ridiculous. That's it right there. But the stuff about the kids, good grief. Good grief. If that doesn't get you, I don't know what will. Um, <clears throat> House of Black Entrance, we go to break. Well, it's Buddy and Julia Hart. Darby with Sting! Yes, Buddy with Julia Hart. TNT Championship. We see footage of Muda's last match, his last match as Great Muda, and then he's going to be Keiji Muto uh, for a match against Tetsuya Naito. Quickly, you may have noticed a lack of reviewing... Wrestle Kingdom Night 2, the Okada, or the Okada, I forget the other guy's name, but that shoot kick, the way it worked shoot kick, or maybe legit shoot because Okada seemed really goddamn pissed. That, and the lack of reviewing Muda's bye-bye, uh, and, you know, possibly not reviewing Muda's last match, or Keiji Muda's last match. There's a reason for this. There's only so much time that I have on my hands, and... I apologize for not being able to review everything. Darby did hurt his leg during that. I'm surprised that Darby can even walk because I've seen him take all kinds of bumps in front of you know a few hundred people in Seattle. So I'm amazed he can still walk. Uh, then eventually House of Black comes out and they fight and they fight and fight and fight. Fight, 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 fight. The Sting in or T show. The or Sting show. That didn't work at all. I'm trying here. I'm really trying. Mid-match brawl, that's new. Also, apron bumps. Why the apron bumps? Why do people wish to not walk? It's cool to do moves, but I don't know. They laid the shit in. We get a Sky a Scorpion, a cop and drop while Murphy's laid over the ropes. One, two, three. Okay. And then Shivani's interviewing Darby. What's next? Apparently Samoa Joe. He's coming for everything Darby has, and he's going to lay him out, beat him up, and all that. We get a no-holds-barred match next week. Which means Wardlow's going to make his return and cost Samoa Joe the match. If he doesn't, then I really don't know why they bothered to give Darby the hometown win just to have him lose it a few weeks later. I mean, I don't know. I, I just... You might as well go with Darby at this point because Samoa Joe is still the Ring of Honor TV champion. So, package on Adam Cole, baby. The recovery, stepping forward. He is excited to be back in the ring. <laughs> and then Ethan Page wants his music played. Stokely, who uh, looks and talks like a little child, uh, upset that he can't get on a carnival ride. He knocks uh, Isaiah Cassidy, and this whole thing is just not good. This, <clears throat> I know this stuff has played out on Dark Elevation and Dark, and even on Rampage, and I recognize they have a bunch of people signed. They're trying to do this. They don't run house shows. They're not running house shows yet. God forbid if they do start running house shows, if they're only drawing 6,000 in Rupp Arena with the rent alone on that. But I do wonder how many people are still going to be around in a year or two. I mean, yes, you can have a lot of wrestlers, and yes, WWE has a lot of wrestlers they don't use. There comes a time that even if you have a lot of money, keeping people around just to say that you have them on your roster and not use them isn't the best thing. It's like what WCW and WWE did during the Monday Night Wars, by the way. So, we get a pop for Ho! There you go, folks. Apparently some people like that for whatever reason. I decided why not continue the whole thing as Shivani did when he showed up at, what was it, Revolution 2021? Anyway, so Jungle Boy, whoa, 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 took on Ethan Page and Matt Hardy. Why didn't didn't call him Delethan? I don't know. Shout out to Not Dr. Death on Twitter for that. I hope I pronounced that right. If I didn't, if you happen to be watching this, that is, but I know you're a busy man. Thanks for, thanks for the uh, nickname. There was nothing wrong with this. Hook really can be a big star. Jungle Boy and it's basically Jungle Hook, O-E-O-E-O. -E -O -E -O. They, they could work as a team, but I don't know if you need to have them team up all the time. Have it be gradual and then have them 
maybe go for the tag titles down the road. If, like, the guns beat the acclaimed for him or something. <clears throat> um, they kept teasing Matt Hardy and Ethan having issues. Ethan wanted to glory. That cost him when he got caught in the snare trap. Okay. I mean, it was what it was. Again, nothing wrong with it. Family therapy. That therapist. Good grief. That th Tiffany something. She's an independent wrestler. Uh, Nieves? Nieves? Not exactly sure how to pronounce it. I saw the tweet just before I went on, before I started recording this, and I'm like, boy, more more from her, please. Basically, it's all of, it was all about the guns winning a tag title shot. That's it. It was kept short, but there was one funny line. Our, our sins as sons are, or our faults as sons are your failure as a father. Don't have the guns beat the acclaim. There's no reason for the guns to be tag team champions <laughs> anytime soon, in my opinion. And it's Renee, Renee Paquette, backstage with Hangman. He wants to KO Moxley in Dayton, Ohio next week. Mind you, Renee is his wife and is literally uh, about a foot from you, Hangman. Here's Wheeler Yuta to challenge him for Rampage. I came to this conclusion of Wheeler Yuta being on the mic might not be a good thing. And Wheeler's not bad in the ring. Brian Danielson woke the crowd up and then did everything he could to get <laughs> the most out of the machine. Brian Cage, a.k.a. this dried up. Hardened, molded, piece of roided up clay. Look, I know he can do some mood, but good God, we've seen everything that we can see from this guy. Brian Cage needed to break Brian's arm. Destroy his arm. Didn't matter if he won or lose. MJF would pay him. <laughs> Eventually, um, we get a roll up. One, two, three. Danielson wins. There was a nice superplex spot earlier, but it's mostly about the aftermath. Where Cage destroys him and then MJF shows up. With a chair, and they're you know they're beating him up with a chair, and they're taking a while because I think they forgot to give the cue for somebody to go out there and actually do something. Here comes to Kanosuke Takeshita. Takeshita, I'm just gonna say that because I can barely pronounce Kanosuke as you can tell, and he hits knee to cage. And anybody that uh, gets that reference, I love you guys. And. I did note that this almost has to be a double or nothing match. MJF's going to beat Danielson. He's going to beat Danielson in Revolution. I love Danielson. He doesn't need to win. MJF needs to hold that title for a while. Takeshita and MJF almost have to be in the main event of double or nothing. I mean, I'm trying to think about who else it could be. Because they love Takeshita. He could definitely be over. He could definitely be over even higher facing MJF and losing. He's got, he's got, he's got the crowd on his side. Anyway, then we get checking on Danielson, the doctor, and he says, I don't care. I wrestled 60 plus matches with a separated shoulder. Tony Storm versus Ruby Soho. Tony Storm is a heel now because she's wearing pants. Still doesn't hide her obvious, well, assets, just saying. But she looks great. She can play a heel. And it's her and Ruby Soho. They do pre-tapes about... Tony is like, all these AEW originals. And Ruby's like, I'm going to stand up for the AEW originals. I made some goddamn notes here that uh, Ruby Soho, Ruby, Ruby, Ruby Soho, has been there since All Out 2021. Tony Storm has been there since March 30th of 2022. That's a six-month difference, guys. Six and a half. That's six and a half, seven-month difference almost. I don't think they know what the fuck they're doing. And I'm not talking about the women. I'm talking about how they're booking this. Like, they're trying to give them a few. I'll give them that much credit. <laughs> Announcers pushing the originals versus the new talent storyline. The Invaders, the New Blood Millionaires Club storyline. That didn't work all that good in WCW. That has me worried. That has me very worried. Are we hot shying to that point? Let me tell you what happened with uh, the New uh, Blood Millionaires Club storyline. It didn't go much of anywhere. And the company was off TV about a year later. Now, I don't think that's going to happen with AEW, but the timeline's kind of lining up that they might need another network. This is weird. Anyway, the women laid their shit in. Tony feigns having a broken nose and it hits a couple German suplexes and almost has her beat. It's going for a finish. <clears throat> and then Britt Baker's music hits. Britt Baker, AEW original, and 
distracts, just stands out on the stage, and Tony Storm, even though she's, you know, that far away, Britt's that far away, huh, I wonder what she's going to do. And then uh, Destination Unknown, the Flatliner 1, 2, 3. So I guess Britt's a full-blown babyface after teasing this thing of being, you know, uh, going over Jamie Hayter and making it all about Britt Baker with Jamie Hayter as champion. So now their faces... And now Tony Storm's a heel. And now Soraya, Soraya, Defender of Abuserverse, is a heel. And I'm not against the idea of Tony Storm working as a heel because she could do it. I just, this is very confusing. Because it's not, if Ruby had been there since, say, the pandemic era, then you could kind of call it almost an original. The company was well and truly established like you had all out 2021 that was the first big that was the first big pay-per-view back on the road with a full crowd <laughs> because the pay-per-view before that was double or nothing when they had the full crowd but they were at daily's place i i'm all for them giving women the story i don't i don't know what the hell they're doing here i don't think they do and i'm not talking about the women i'm talking about the people putting it together so anyway free tape from mjf all I'm going to say is one line that MJF said. Bear in mind, this is what MJF said. Granted, I'm not the first Jew to run or to hide from a man with blue eyes. Good God! <laughs> Help! Oof. He knocks Takeshita, he knocks Brian Danielson, refers to Regal's Ellen DeGeneres on meth, without referring to Regal by name. And it's going to be an open challenge contract. And Tony Khan has it signed. It's answered by Timothy Thatcher, who's been wrestling in pro wrestling Noah since WWE didn't know what the fuck to do with him. And there you go. And I've seen a bit of Timothy Thatcher in Noah. A bit, not much. Laces Shane, he fits in just fine there. So, Rampage and Dynamite run down. And Darby versus Joe, no holds barred. Acclaim versus Guns for the tag titles. Apparently, Jamie Hayter versus Emi Sakura on Rampage. What we're doing with our women's champion now, are we, Tony? All right. Ian Riccoboni, Caprice Coleman, join Excalibur uh, for the uh, Jay Briscoe tribute match. Lethal and Sanjay come out with the Jay Briscoe tribute shirts. 100% um, of the proceeds go to uh, the Briscoe family, which is good. That um, That was good shit. And then, uh, I, I don't know how Mark Briscoe got through this. Everybody grieves differently. I'm not knocking him. I'm not knocking at all. I'm not really going to mention too much about the match because it's something you really need to go experience. But, but Mark's a tougher guy than a lot of us because getting through that just eight days after your brother passed away, somebody that you traveled up and down the road with, somebody you grew up with, somebody who was only two years your senior, if this is on Jay's birthday. Jay Briscoe's birthday. What would have been his 39th birthday, I believe, they said. And Mark Briscoe, his birthday was a day after Jay's passing. You couldn't, you, you couldn't line uh, up a more tragic series of events. I mean, good grief. But Jay Lethal versus Mark Briscoe. They knew each other well. Jay had been one of Jay's best opponents. Lethal had been one of Briscoe's best opponents. Too many Jay pronouns, pal. They laid their stuff in. Commentary mentioned, if you love somebody, tell them, because we have today. We we may not have tomorrow. You know, says Jerry, we only have today. There's a blockbuster to the floor, an elbow dropped through a table. That's where you do a table spot. Because it meant something. It shows how crazy the Briscoes are. And I admit, I've never watched a ton of the Briscoe stuff, but what I've watched has been very good because they have a different look and everything and well they did and now mark and mark eventually you know was able to hit the j driller one two three big pop and he was emotional telling the fans he loved him telling his family loved him telling jay loved him rosters on the stage at least a good portion of the roster including a lot of people that the briscoes faced in ring of honor and Hug from Tony Khan, hug from the roster, all that big emotion. Mark Briscoe, gain to hold the belts high, retire those tag belts, and 
have new tag belts made and just let that legacy sit to the side because that way you can have a new launch with Ring of Honor. And I'm, I'm not saying don't ever let Mark <clears throat> team with somebody and go after the belts, but just have those belts retired because, yeah, that was that was pretty emotional. I don't... That probably is going to be on a lot of people's favorite matches of the year list just for the sheer emotion in general. It was a good TV match and they did some good stuff, but it was almost subdued because of what happened. And rest in peace, Jay Briscoe. I don't really know how else to finish this. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm Charmichlin. Rest in peace, Jay Briscoe. See you soon.